come on, come on. So were the gunshots on set as loud as they were in the Dolby theater where I saw the rover? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they were, weren't they? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell because as soon as you're doing those kinds of things, everyone in the crew gets handed these kind of giant earmuffs, so I can never really tell exactly how loud they are. It's important that it be loud. My little gun was a bit of a sissy one, to be honest. Really? It sounded like a cap gun when you were shooting it. Depends if you've got a quarter load or a half load yeah, or a full load in it, there, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Is this man your friend? Tell me where your brother is. He's going south, a long way from here. So, Rob, was your character's stutter very specifically scripted, or did you have some freedom to decide how the dialogue would flow? That's a good question, actually. I don't know. Was it? I mean, not really. I think there, was, there were quite specific bits of repetition and stuff in, in, the, in the script, and uh, I think just trying to figure out a way to say that which doesn't make you sound like you're completely crazy. I guess it's, you know, he can't really... Um, he can't process uh, his his thoughts very quickly, um, and so it kind of you know he has to keep beginning the sentence again. It's not really a stutter; he's just can't remember how to speak properly. I'm slow in control here. Uh, we've heard that you might be in the running to play Indiana Jones. If that happens, would that be even more daunting than Edward Cullen? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not in the running for it. I, well, I don't know, maybe I am. That'd be so funny if I actually get offered it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you very clearly did make a unique landscape for the rover, but when you're shooting a post-apocalyptic world in the Australian outback, can you help but think about or pay homage to Mad Max? Uh, when you, you know, yeah, uh, you, you, you know, that, that was such a seminally important film or, you know, kind of series of films for Australian cinema. So as soon as you venture out into that part of the world, you know, you know that you're venturing into the, you know, the house that, that George Miller built. But having said that, you know, I, I always knew that this movie would be a very different kind of movie and I found it quite easy to push all of that aside from, from early on. It's much more fantasy oriented Mad Max, isn't it, I reckon? It, yeah. You, you believe it could be real, but it's, it's so kind of colourful and over the top. In a yeah, way. and fun, and they and they are action movies. You know, the Rover isn't an action movie. It's a kind of it's a really dark, menacing movie about a world, you know, a near future gone wrong, and about a kind of a strange sort of intimacy that's found between these two guys out in the middle of all of this madness. God feels nothing for you. The only thing that means anything right now is that I'm here, and he's not. And lastly, Guy, do you think your character was a violent man before the collapse happened? I don't think so. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I think he was a strong man, but, but, but not somebody who, you know, needed to be violent. Um, I, I feel like it's something that, um, you know, just built slowly in him. And obviously he, he committed a horrific uh, murder, you know, 10 years ago. And I think that, you know, just sent him on a, you know, a particular kind of spiral. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for talking about the rover with us. That's right. Thank you. You don't learn to fight till death's going to come real soon. We'll come.